I don't like my campground. Just wait until you see the thing that's right in the middle of it. In this video, I share my nine tips of what to do if you find yourself in a campground that you just don't like. Oh, there is just too much going on here. Way too much. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing, and these are exciting times to push past fear build confidence and live amazing. And you definitely need to push past fear and build confidence if you find yourself in a campground that you just don't like. Because really, if we're on a path to live amazing, then we wanna make the best out of every situation. Even when they start up noisy equipment, this is one more thing that makes this campground not the best. So basically, <laughs> If you can hear me over the noise, basically what happened was I got to this campground. I just had a bad vibe and didn't like it. And you know, it was bound to happen sometime. If you're full timing or if you do a lot of camping, you know that not every single campground is going to be awesome. So this is campground number 11 for me on my cross country trip. And the last 10 were all pretty good, if not really awesome. I had great views. I had privacy. I looked out on woods and rivers and streams. You can see my view here is not the best but that's not the half of it there is a crazy thing in the middle of the campground I can't wait to show you but as I personally have been working through dealing with the fact that this is not my favorite campground I did come up with some eight actually nine now nine awesome tips on what to do if you are in this situation so here we go and then after I go through these tips I will show you what it is about my campground that I just don't like, including that thing that is sitting in the middle of the campground. So the first tip is just give it time. Sometimes we are too quick to judge. You come in, you've been driving all day, you have a certain expectation and it's not up to snuff, and then you immediately make this quick judgment. Withhold that judgment. Don't make that snap decision not to like it. Maybe you're really hungry or you're really tired from the drive. Decide not to put a label on it. Decide not to decide. Just give yourself a day or two to really feel for sure how you feel. Maybe you'll feel better after a good meal or some sleep, right? Okay, so if you still don't like it, my next tip is to assess why. Make a list. List everything that you don't like about it and really look at the list. So maybe you have a barky dog next to you or it's super noisy. You can probably hear this loud machine that just started up next to me. And then make another list of all the good things. Does the good outweigh the bad? Maybe the weather's amazing or there's a bike trail nearby or there's lots of shopping or things to see and do. Maybe you need to just focus more on the good and just kind of have an, have an attitude adjustment that will help you get through this time at the campground. My next tip is to reframe it. If you were living in a house, a sticks and bricks, and you had people next door that were cranking their stereos super loud, would that be more of a problem than being in a campground with neighbors that are cranking their stereos super loud? Maybe you just need to reframe it because, hey, you are on the move. You're not going to be here forever. So maybe it's just something where you can be like, hey, at least I'm not in my house having to deal with this, right? Okay, if you're still not loving your campground and you're having a hard time dealing with it, and <laughs> yes, you can probably hear this really loud motor coming along in the background. I mean, that might be something that you're dealing with too right now. Ask yourself what can be changed. In my situation, I think I can move my sites and I think I'm gonna do just that. So you could talk to the manager and maybe move to a different part of the park that will be better for you. So see if you can do that. Or another way you could change your situation is change your reservations. Maybe your next stop, you can see if they can take you in earlier. My next tip is to look for the gift in the situation. So maybe you really wanted to go swimming in the pool and you get here and you find that the pool is closed. So instead of focusing on that, what is the gift? Maybe you've been wanting to clean out your pass through. So maybe now is the time you take everything outside of your outside storage and clean that or do a deep clean inside. Or maybe there's another project you were going to work on, like writing your book or working on your own YouTube channel. So that could be the gift. So just focus on maybe this is what you're meant to be doing instead. 
My next tip is look for the lesson. What is this situation teaching you that you must have? If you can't find yourself happy and accepting the situation, maybe you really do need quiet or privacy or good view or whatever it is, a nice pool. Then that is something that you can take with you going forward and knowing that, hey, from now on, I wanna make sure that I have this thing. My next tip is ask yourself a really big question. Are you focusing on this to avoid thinking about or doing something else? Sometimes we use these situations as a distraction and we get so all caught up in this and we're complaining to everyone or we're wallowing in how bad the situation is so that we don't work on what we really should be working on or we're avoiding something that we've been meaning to do. If after a couple of days you are still annoyed and it's still taking away your energy and you still find yourself kind of in a bad place, then it's probably time to move that is the good thing about this life is that you absolutely are portable so get in your camper and go even if it's to Walmart it will definitely make you feel better to just get out of the situation so my last tip tip nine is what if you really are stuck? Let's say you can't move, you can't go to Walmart, you can't change your reservations, you can't even move to a different site in the campground. Well, the truth is when we're in a situation that we don't like, we have two choices. We can decide to be stuck in the muck and complain and wallow in it and just be all negative, or we can decide to look on the bright side, to change our attitude and just focus on the good, be positive because it's your life. And if you wanna live amazing, if you wanna make the most out of your life, then happiness is a choice. So I just encourage you to choose happiness as much as you can, to choose not to wallow in the negative and just make the most of the bad situation because sometimes all you can just do is just laugh about it. Okay, so can you tell I've moved? Now, I haven't switched campgrounds, but I switched sites, and this has made a huge difference. Now my site is bigger. You can see that I have a view. Now it's not a gorgeous view, but I'm not looking into somebody else's window or looking at somebody else's vehicles. I actually have some space, and that makes me feel more open. You know, psychologically, I just feel more relaxed. So I'm really grateful that I took the time to move. If you've ever had a fifth wheel, if you have a fifth wheel, you know, they're not the quickest things to move, you know? And since that's me by myself, I'm checking and double checking the list. Took me a while to do it, but it's worth it. And I'm here now and I'm here for over a couple weeks. So I might as well enjoy where I am. But let me tell you what happened when I got here and about the thing in the middle of the campground. So when I got here, this campground didn't feel like any other campground I'd ever been to. And I learned this campground isn't like any campground I've been to. So the campground I just came from was right outside a national park. There were lots of international people. Everybody that was there was there for the national park. So whether they were full timers or weekenders or just here on vacation, it was all about tourism. It was all about visiting. And there was a lot of community and connection. People were out and about and, hey, have you been or where have you? Where are you going? Have you seen this? Where have you come from? Where are you going next? So there's definitely a lot of camaraderie and that happens pretty much at every campground I've gone to. And I've also stayed at campgrounds where the campground itself is the attraction and people are the same way, very friendly and, hey, welcome, you know, where, how long are you here? That kind of thing. So when I got here, it, I just didn't get the warm fuzzies. I'm driving up and down the, the, the road, you know, I'm driving up and down the campground roads by all the sites and the campground's almost full and yet it feels like a ghost town. I mean, there's nobody out. And as I'm driving, I'm, it's, it's even getting stranger. I'm noticing people don't have their patio mats out. People don't have their chairs out. It just feels like a ghost town. So I'm not getting the warm fuzzies. And what I learned is that this campground is in an area where the property prices are sky high. So the people here by and large, the most of them are working and this is how they're living. So they're working all day and they're coming back to their campers and you know, they're going back to work. And the reason why they don't bother setting up the, the patio mats and chairs is that most of them just move to another campground and then they come back. They just bounce 
bounce back and forth between campgrounds. So it's a commuter campground. So I know they don't mean to be antisocial, but they probably don't want to talk to the few people that are here that are traveling anyway. They don't want to hear, hear about, you know, where am I going or where I've been and, you know, all the attractions and stuff because they're busy working. So that was one thing. But the main thing was this. So here it is. It is so freaking loud. Um, you probably can't even hear me, but the reason why it's here is that they have an electrical problem with the campground. And rather than close a section, they have this generator and it some serious rewiring needs to be done. It's been here over a month and it'll probably be another month until they get it fixed. But it's definitely loud. And yet it is so close to a lot of other campers. So I want to hear from you as to what challenges you've been faced with on your travels. What are your bad campground stories and how did you get through it? And I would love for you to join the amazing team, the A team. This is the community where we help support and inspire each other to live amazing. Just push on the subscribe button. And if you liked this video, you will love the next one. I'll see you in the next video.